Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I've got on the bench this week is my Realistic, which was a brand sold through Radio Shack, uh, DX350 radio. And this does AM, FM, uh, long wave and short wave. And I had picked this up at a yard sale and it works fine. Turn it on here. Turn that off before, uh, before we get a copyright strike and they start playing music. Uh, but the one problem it had was it was missing the battery door, as is so common on portable electronics like this. And it was particularly a nuisance on this because uh, the way the battery sits in here, uh, just setting this guy down, oftentimes the battery would actually pop out and then the other batteries would fall out as well. So, you know, this is from, if I had to guess, maybe... I don't know, mid nineties, uh, you know, there's not any parts available for this anymore. Uh, and when I had picked this up, they had a piece of tape over it, which you know, was just a constant gooey mess. I thought, well, let me take a shot at 3d print or designing and 3d printing a door for this. So that is exactly what I did. And this is what I came up with. I don't know what the original door, uh, looked like. Um, I think based on these two small notches here that it may have engaged in these two spots, uh, but they're quite small. And I thought, I think I can actually just hit the inside edge with a much longer uh, slot that goes in there. Hopefully you can see that probably shows up better against my hand. Um, and then add a piece up here that just pulls straight back and a slot to put my fingernail in to pull this guy back. And I wasn't sure this was going to work because I had to make it incredibly thin. Um, I don't have, a pair of calipers handy, but I think this is one millimeter thick uh, on this face. We'll take a look when we do the design for this. Um, and then the vertical part um, is not much thicker, if any thicker uh, at all. Um, but it worked really well. Actually, uh, I think the first one I printed needed some adjustments. It didn't line up quite right. You know, it's hard to measure uh, something like this. Uh, I did try and model the surface, but because there's so many differences here in uh, just these these curves and, and this thin ledge that it sits on. Um, I think I did go through a couple versions until it fit perfectly, but let's see, we can hook this part down here first and then come up here and just with my thumbs, I just push that guy down and then it drops into place. And you can see we have a perfect or certainly near perfect fit with nothing sticking out on any of the faces. And to remove it, like I said, it's just a thumbnail into this slot, pull back, and it pops right off. So let's go take a look at the design for this and we can see how thick this was. I honestly don't remember exactly how thick I made it, but it's incredibly thin. I'm truly, this has been on and off of here probably a dozen times now, um, and I've had no issues whatsoever. Um, I'm continuously surprised by just how durable a lot of the things I've designed and printed are uh, in comparison to what my original expectations were when I got into 3D printing. So let's go take a look at the design for this. Okay, so here's the design for this. And I did check the thickness and both the thickness of what I'll call the top here as well as the side is only one millimeter. So this really is quite a thin print. I would recommend printing this at a 0.1 millimeter layer height. Um, to make sure that you're getting really good adhesion of the plastic between layers. Uh, and then also just to capture the fine details in this print. Um, I did add a section here for reinforcement um, that does make uh, the stress point here at the edge uh, a bit more durable. Um, and you can see this part sticking up here. This is actually an integrated uh, support. This guy prints with this face here down on the print bed. So this integrated support just ensures that we get the very edge of this uh, supported. And I think I let my printer bridge this um, when I printed it, but you could allow the slicer to just fill in um, uh, supports underneath this as well. Uh, you can see this piece up here now in much better detail that hooks in um, into that battery tray. And these surfaces are all, I believe, as close as I could get to those AA batteries without hitting so that everything sat flush. So I think that's it for the design for this. Uh, not a whole lot to it. 
Uh, for the uh, tenth of a percent of you that are watching this video that might have one of these DX350 radios, I guess this is probably jackpot. Um, for everyone else, you know, I hope you enjoyed just the insight into the design. Um, and I'm sure you've got something sitting around in your house that maybe doesn't have a battery door anymore. And this gives you some ideas for that. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I do a new video like this every single Friday. Um, it focuses on something I've designed to solve a problem for myself or in the shop. Um, and occasionally I feature uh, designs that folks have sent me as well. So if you've got a design that you're particularly proud of, reach out to me at the contact page on my site, fpfdesigns.com. And if you'd like to download this, if you've got one of these radios and need to print one, everything I feature on this channel, I make the STLs completely free, uh, available again, right on my site, fpfdesigns.com. And that is linked down in the description below. Guys, thanks for tuning in. If you like this, hit that like button, consider subscribing. I'll catch you next Friday. Mm -hmm.